Hi crafty folks, Amy here with Amy's Wares and today I'm going to make for you an easy thank you card featuring this new around the world stencil from A Colorful Life Designs. Now I have some little mini ink pads from Katherine Pooler and some nice bright colors and I'm going to do this with some very simple masking and very simple ink blending to kind of add kind of a unique look to the card and give it the look of dimension, but it's really just single layer. So I'm going to do that with this removable sticker paper. I did get this from Amazon and it is such a huge package. It's going to last me a lifetime. And I will link it in the video description box below if it's still available, but it's basically standard um, eight and a half by 11 sheets. Here's a photo of the finished card to show you the direction that we're headed. Uh, basically I cut one down to A2 size. So that's US A2, four and a quarter, quarter by five and a half. And as you can see here, I'm tearing a corner off of it. I want it to have that cool torn look and I'm taking the sticky portion and lining it up directly with my card base. I'm getting a little bit of wrinkles here, but it doesn't really matter because the main thing I need is just to mask off that corner. At this point, I realized, duh, I put the wrong piece on there. I just want to mask off the lower right corner and have that remain white, whereas the color and the stenciling will be on the top portion of the card. So I'm just gonna set that aside um, and only use that lower right portion. Now this is my cake decorating turntable. Sadly, I don't have a link for it because it's probably about 25 years old. I used to be a cake decorator when I was a young adult um, and this is left over from that. But I did put one of the Ulta New sticky mats on it. This is one of the low tack sticky mats and I am working directly on that card base. So this is gonna be nice and flat, easy to ship. Now, as you saw, I did use some residual ink from my um, cottontail blending brushes from the rabbit hole designs, just to lay down a little bit of color because I want to make sure that that torn edge really is defined. Now, if I were to do just the stencil, it would show a little bit, but it wouldn't be nearly as dramatic. And I want every little grain of that torn paper to show. So that's the way that you'll do that, is just to kind of do some ink blending before you do the stenciling step. Now I'm using colors that get along together, meaning they're next to each other on the color wheel. So if I were to throw like orange or something into the mix here, that would really clash with these colors. Um, with the greens and the blues and it would kind of muddy it up and make it a little bit more brown So I'm using colors that are analogous and on the color wheel next to each other so that they'll blend well and work well together And I'm just kind of going in diagonal strips kind of with a similar um, Diagonal to the torn paper and I'm just really beefing up that color now as you can see I've switched to my all to new blending brushes because these are um, these I feel like lay down more saturated color and I really want this to pop. So here's the magic moment. I'm going to pull back the stencil and look at that. So rich and deep and look at all that detail. Now I'm going to wipe this off with my stamp chamois here. Um, I can see it's pretty crusty. I probably had to go wet it. <laughs> Once it dries out, you know, those things get so hard. But here you go. I'm using my pokey tool from Judy and I'm pulling back this masking paper here to reveal that cool torn edge and this makes it look like it's dimensional like there's two layers to the card but it's really just one now a fun thing i could have done is i could have reused that mask and maybe kicked it down just a little bit and then just a, done a little bit of light gray ink blending and that would have really or actually i could use the top portion of the mask and scoot it down just to the edge um line it back up to the torn edge and then do just a very subtle gray ink blending off the edge of that. And then that would have really given it the look of a second piece really popped up. So that's something I would probably do next time. Anyway, now I'm shopping my sentiment book here to figure out how I want to finish the card. This is my storage solution. I have a lot of stuff ready to go. It saves me a ton of time. These are little baseball card pocket protector sheets and I do a bunch of stuff kind of in advance. So I have it ready to go. Here I was looking for possible foam to go with that sweet friend and pop it up, but I realized I didn't have any um, for that particular die. So I did end up going back to that double layer thank you die. I think it's from Uniquely Creative, not 100%, but I will link everything that I use in the video description box below. If you expand and scroll down, that's where you'll find always find all those details. Um, I think most card makers follow that that trend of putting all the links below their video. So if you expand and scroll down, that's where you'll find all the details. 
if I miss something, always let me know in the comments. It's very possible that I could miss a certain product that I used. If you're curious, just shoot me a comment and I will get you that link. But when you do follow those links, it's no additional cost to you and it really does help me out a lot. So I appreciate it. Now I have these little foam dots from scrapbook.com. This pack is cool. They're um, multiple different sizes. I believe there's black and white in this set. I'm not sure off the top of my head, but what's cool about these is they're only um, lower profile. They're like one millimeter thick. So they give a little bit of dimension, but not too much. So again, overall, this is going to be nice and flat. And you can see when I take the backer off, these are actually black, which I love because then even if the recipient looks at it from the side, they aren't going to see white foam strips. They're only going to see black. So this nestles perfectly in that little masked off space. I'm going to use my little custom stamp on the back. Um, again, if I remember, I will link this. If I forget, let me know. But that's a quick way to put my uh, logo on the back of a card. Now, these are some of my favorite products from my crafty stash. Uh, Mary Kay at A Colorful Life Design started carrying these in the shop, and they are amazing. They're little packages of bling that you can buy. As you can see, there's all different colors. I love customizing them to my specific cards. This is a satin black. Um, and I'll link that below, but these little packages will last you a really long time and they're all different sizes. So I love to use bling that's all different sizes. I don't like it when they're all the same size. I feel like a variation in the width of the little circles looks better. Um, and I'm just going to put these down in an odd smattering on the front of the card and that's going to finish the card. So thank you so much for spending time with me. This stencil is one of thousands in the shop and part of the June release and I will catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.